The New York Times crossword. The most iconic puzzle on the planet, challenging millions every single day. But what if I told you this legendary puzzle isn't crafted by a secret group of rich men in Manhattan, but by people like you and me, hobbyists from all around the world? Hi, I'm Spencer, and I've had the incredible experience of seeing my puzzles published in the New York Times. And today, I'm going to show you how you can do it too. Whether you're a puzzle enthusiast or just curious about how it all works, this video will take you behind the scenes of what it takes to get your crossword published in the New York Times. And trust me, it's more accessible than you might think. Let's dive in. Part one, why? First, prestige. The New York Times crossword is by far the most prestigious crossword, and it's not even close. For over 75 years, the New York Times crossword has been the gold standard in the puzzle world. It's the puzzle that the best constructors aspire to, and the one that solvers eagerly await each day. Being published in the Times means you're part of a long tradition of excellence. You're joining the ranks of legendary constructors and contributing to a puzzle that has been a cultural icon for generations. And it's not just about personal achievement. Being a New York Times constructor is an instant conversation starter at family gatherings, parties, or even a job interview. Plus, it's a title that stays with you. Once you've been published in the Times, you're forever part of that elite group. It's something that stays on your resume, your social media bio, and your personal bragging rights for life. Second, attention. If your puzzle gets published in the Times, it will literally be played by millions of people. Plus, many of these solvers actively discuss the puzzles online, whether it's on social media, blogs, or even YouTube channels dedicated to daily crossword reviews. When your puzzle hits the Times, you'll see it dissected and discussed by people who truly appreciate the craft. It's an amazing feeling to see your work being talked about by so many. Plus, there's the global reach. Your puzzle will be solved on breakfast tables and in coffee shops from New York to Tokyo. You might even get messages from people across the world who've played your puzzle and loved it. So, if you've ever wanted to make a real impact with your work, getting a puzzle in the New York Times is one of the best ways to do it. Finally, payment. The New York Times also pays way more than any other major crossword venue, at a whopping $500 for your first two puzzles and increasing to $750 for all puzzles after that. Oh, and on Sundays, that amount is tripled. Part two, how? So hopefully by now you're interested in creating a puzzle for the Times, but how do you actually do that? I'll be diving deeper into all these topics in future videos, but for now, this should serve as a helpful overview. First off, some info about the crossword. The Times crossword is open submission, which means you can technically start submitting puzzles today if you really wanted. However, since you're only allowed three pending submissions at a time, and it can take up to 90 days to receive a response, I'd recommend holding off until you've had some practice and feel confident in your work. The easiest crosswords of the week are the Monday puzzles, and they get progressively harder until Saturday, which is the toughest puzzle of the week. The iconic Sunday crossword is the largest, at 21 by 21 squares, compared to the weekday size of 15 by 15. But it's usually about the same difficulty as a Wednesday puzzle. Monday through Thursday puzzles always have a theme, which usually appears in the longest across entries in a puzzle. These themes are typically straightforward on Mondays and Tuesdays, but get trickier as the week progresses. On Fridays and Saturdays, the puzzle is themeless. These puzzles focus on longer, more interesting words with fewer black squares. Clues in these puzzles are often designed to be more misleading, and they require clever lateral thinking to solve. Creating these wide open spaces requires a really solid intuition for gridding along with lots of trial and error. Because of this, themeless puzzles tend to be more challenging for beginner constructors to create, so I'd recommend starting with themed puzzles. Part three, getting started. Now that you've got an overview of how the New York Times crossword works, you might be wondering how to actually get started. Don't worry, I've got some tips to help you dive in and start crafting puzzles that have a real shot at getting published. If you're gonna spend money on only one thing, it should be a membership to xwordinfo.com. For $20 a year, you get access to a database of every puzzle that has ever run in the Times, as well as tools like the Finder, plus comments from the prolific Jeff Chen on nearly every puzzle from 2014 to mid-2023 that should be very helpful for newer constructors. You can also look at puzzles sorted by any conceivable metric if you're into that kind of data. Looking at past puzzles is a great way to get a feel for what kinds of themes are common in puzzles and how the difficulty can vary by day of the week. Next, you'll need to pick a software for creating puzzles. The best free options at the moment are Crosserville and Ingrid, although if you're willing to spend money, I highly recommend Crossword Compiler. 
Lastly, you'll need a word list. A word list is sort of like a dictionary, but expanded to include things like phrases, abbreviations, initialisms, and people. Word lists also have scores associated with each word, so that your software knows which words to prioritize. For example, fun phrases like X-ray vision or you make me sick would be given high scores, while esoteric abbreviations or variant spellings would have low scores. Bummer topics like death, debt, disease, and dictators are also generally good to avoid, although sometimes a dictator's name does have some kick-ass letters. For a free word list, I highly recommend Spread the Word List, although the $50 Xword Info membership tier unlocks the Xword Info word list, which is also great. You can use as many word lists as you want, although depending on your software, you might have to combine them using something like a Python script. So those are some solid tips to help you get started on your crossword construction journey. But there's one final and arguably most important tip I wanna share with you. Don't do it alone. Building a community is essential for growth and inspiration. It's where you can bounce ideas off of others, get constructive feedback, and stay motivated when the process gets challenging. And that's why I'm so excited to introduce you to something special. I've just launched the very first Discord community dedicated entirely to crossword construction. It's a space where puzzle lovers of all levels can connect, whether you're just starting out or you've been constructing for years. This is where you can share ideas, get feedback, and learn from others who are just as passionate about crosswords as you are. So if you're serious about getting better at crossword construction, come join us on Discord. The link is in the description below. I'm excited to build this community. A lot of people think crosswords are all about stuffy trivia and obscure knowledge, but there's so much more than that. Crosswords can be fun, creative, and even cool. And I believe that bringing more young people into the scene can really shake things up and make crosswords even better. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.